Okay, YouTube, it's Michael Bell back again, and today we're going to get into something a little different. Uh, I'm actually a, a master of the custodial arts, and we at my work run these Dyson vacuum cleaners um, almost every day. And I'm going to show you how to disassemble, reassemble, and clean this vacuum properly to restore it almost to how it should have been when you bought it. A lot of people don't take them apart to clean them, but they're real basic, and they're a very good vacuum uh, cleaner. This is the V6 series of Dyson. And before we get started, you just want to take the head off. A lot of you already know this. It's got one clip there, and then your clip here, and then we'll get to, uh, to disassemble this. But just make sure this, this, this tube's clear. This tube's almost always clear. The clogs usually happen inside the unit itself or in the brush head. So yeah, just uh, follow my video. I know what I'm talking about. And it's really easy to do. I made this video because there were a couple ones online where people didn't explain some stuff. Um, if you have a $500 vacuum cleaner, you really want to keep it up and running. And I use this thing every day. So, yeah, yeah, we're going to get right into this. Now that we have the rotating head off, assembly off, um, to, to get the roller out of here, you've really, it's really simple actually. One thing I have noticed in my use of these is if you look down in this hole, you will get debris caught down in here and um, you can get a clog right here in the port that goes into the units itself. So you really want to clean this bottom part here. Um, you, you'll get hair and build up and whatnot, but it's really simple to remove the head if you have something clogged in here and sometimes it'll cause an error. Um, you can get large amounts of hair stuck on the roller that'll build up over time. But you basically, you've got two locks on the roller and on this bottom side just use your flathead screwdriver and you turn there to unlock, pretty simple, and fold it over this way in this larger one. Now this one you don't have to turn very much and it's spring operated so it's going to pop out is you just turn it and pull it out and then the the roller itself comes right out of the assembly and if you want to clean it if you're a neat freak you can kind of clean clean the roller up but otherwise you can really access the inside of the the head unit itself um, if you really have a clog you know within here you can clean all this and reassembly is real easy as well. As you can see down here, get a little closer here. Here's your spring. Actually, see the buildup here? Look at the debris. It, 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 I mean, if you're using this every day like I do, you're going to get debris in there. Um, when I do use this, it's for, see the hair? Look at the hair that's built up on that. I'm not real squeamish. The sad thing is when, when we use these in our company's building, um, you don't know who the hell's hair this is, but I've been around quite a bit, so always just wash your hands when you're done with this. So, you know, there's hair there that can that can cause a failure after a long time as well. And you just want to clean this stuff out. So, and then just to install the roller back, you're just going to put the roller in there. And it'll just go in and as you can see here here's the locking tabs and when you go to lock it when you turn it it's going to click in so you need to right alongside here see this little see this tab here and there's a tab up top and that's what it's going to lock into so put your roller in kind of put it in there Okay, so you've got it you've got it sprung in now, and then you're just gonna relock everything. A little click, not a big click. And then come back to this side and you've got to lock this piece in again and just turn it back. And that's how you take the head apart. And also you want to check within the tube here if it's clogged as well. And if you tilt it in, you can actually get down and see into the roller itself a lot of times there will be clogs that get inside of here so there you go and uh, don't be afraid to use water if you want to clean this the one thing is on these Dysons um, you want to be careful because here's your electrical outputs um, 
to, to turn the head through the tube. The tube has one as well. Just try not to get these wet. And if they if you do get them wet, just make sure it's 100% completely dry. So, yeah, there's that part of it. And we'll get back to the tube. Now, as you can see, this one here is taking some damage um, from a fall. Uh, the, the one thing about these Dysons is you really don't want them to fall on this air circulation part because this is made out of plastic and this is kind of common on these on the v6 series that you actually will bust these but what you want to do is just remove your filter and when you go to clean your filter if you read the manual uh, you clean this with water and what you want to do is concentrate your water on the filter itself and run water down down the tube here and actually what I do when I get it clean is I actually start squeezing on it a little bit don't squeeze too hard because it's made out of plastic but you'll actually see the dirt go into your sink or whatever you're cleaning on so just remove uh, your filter and these are replaceable uh, they're not too bad Amazon and eBay have these if you don't want to go to Dyson to get them is remove your air filter and then what you want to do is remove your cup and to remove the cup you press down on the unit itself and we'll pop the bottom of the cup out very simple like that and you press it again and see what it did it unlatched the container and pull your container out this way you can clean your container inside and out they do kind of get some muck on it uh, usually not too much and inside the cup here a lot of people don't realize is uh, there's actually a flapper valve on the inside of the cup see the black see the black here that's actually a flapper valve that will open and shut see if we can get it to shut probably not And sometimes you'll get debris that is caught but behind this flapper valve that won't allow it to open if you start losing suction it'll actually somewhat close see how it's closed there it'll actually close and behind this black flapper piece you can get debris and it'll cause it to close and then it can cause the uh, max button to flash like there's a clog so you just go inside here and make sure that that flapper valve is open. And that's pretty much the cup. Um, again, there's your electrical connections here. Try not to get that wet. If you do get it wet, make sure it's 100% completely dry. So just set that aside. And then on the Dyson unit itself, um, we're going to go a little more detailed than most people. You have two screws to remove the battery. There's one in the front here and one in the back, and they're Phillips head screws. So go ahead and remove those Phillips head screws. And make sure you're placing these screws on a paper towel or something. You don't want to lose these screws. And you can actually get non-OEM batteries for these on Amazon reasonably cheap if you if your battery goes bad. Uh, Dyson wants $75 for the there it goes screw come out for the batteries which I think is a little high and then the battery will just be removed and as you pull the trigger there's a little um, little button here that engages the engine or the, the suction device on your Dyson there. So Okay, now, now we're going to get into this here, and, and the purple surround here, a lot of people don't know how to take this thing apart to clean it, and what you want to do is get you a flathead, flathead screwdriver, and start right here on this, this point here. You just want to get underneath of the lip of it, okay, and it, it's just popped in, so don't go too far into it, and you just want to I'll see how that's basically pulled out there. And then go around the central of it, and you're going to pop it out. Oops. Here, pop. It's just clipped in. And it pops out. So now you can clean this. A lot of people don't, it, you don't want to just put water into the unit. You actually want to take this apart and clean the inside and the outside of it. So set that aside. 
now we've come to the part where you're actually going to need that e-torx head and what it is is i believe there's six e-torx heads that puts this plastic piece onto the the rubber the this other piece is rubber and i'll show you that so you've got to remove the six um e-torx heads and the e-torx head size is what's called a t8 it's fairly common don't use the wrong size you have to you have to use the right size and where, where this raises up here that's where your screws are and they're around the whole unit here so you've got to go in and remove the e-torx head now now one little trick here with this is don't pull them out screw by screw um, unscrew each one and just leave the screw in there so you're not losing the screws. There might be five of these screws. That's my dishwasher beeping in the background. I had to shut it off in the middle of the cycle to do this video. And there is just five. There's not six. And what this is going to do, this is going to, you're going to be able to pull this off. And this is important to clean it. Um, a lot of times when you buy these, uh, you have great suction and then it dies and it dies. And a lot of people only clean that, that pre-filter that we removed at the beginning, the pre-filter, and clean this. But, you know, as it, as it gets dirty, you want to clean the whole unit itself. So, to see, this piece just comes off. And make sure you set the five e-torx heads aside or you know take the unit there and you can clean it with water and then you're coming into the actually where the ports are for the vacuum and this piece here will just lift off this this piece gets extremely dirty and this is actually really important that this gets cleaned as well um so set this aside now this is now this part's a little bit more tricky and as you're cleaning this, when we get this apart, you can see that all your suction that goes into these holes is how it creates the most suction. And it's very crucial that this, all this gets clean because all these ports run into the inside of this unit. There's openings in here. And run water through all the openings and through here, and you will see the dirt. Um, to remove this, this is a little bit tricky here. Now, what you have is two metal pieces here that go to the cup that are you have on your cup this is your electrical plug-in and what it's doing is it's pulling power there's a little wire that's why this strip here is gray and there's your electrical your two electrical connections there that go to your battery to power this to rotate your head and these two these two connections here are what goes to the cup. So try not to damage these. You don't want to pry on these. What we're going to what we're going to push on is see these two white clips here. You're going to basically these clips are like um, they're called a Jesus clip on a motorcycle or an E clip, and we're going to compress them toward each other because that's going to release the head of the unit. So take a screwdriver and as you move one side, try to um, because they're not gonna, you're, you're gonna have to kind of pull on this as you, as you do this to get it to engage. Okay. So you're kind of pulling on the head as you're moving these clips. And as those clips, see those clips release there. And as these clips release, um, it's going to release the head and the head's clipped in on the top. So you're kind of going to want to pull, oops. And sometimes this does happen because it's almost under tension that these white clips, will not stay in place okay then you're going to pull it apart maybe not a professional this i'm not a i'm an amateur motorcycle mechanic not a vacuum repair man And then this comes apart and you'll want to clean all this you're okay to clean this with the water but 
the water is crucial for cleaning this especially in these ports here and just set that aside and there's your engine there see how these white clips these white clips compress like that. That's why you have to do it. And just do it one at a time and take your time. Don't, don't necessarily force it because you don't want to break anything. Um, and then you've basically, the only other part to disassemble is you actually have two filters in here in the back of this. Now when you do this, be extremely careful. But you just kind of want to nudge one side of it. And this will pull apart. No water here because this is your circuit board. When you press that max button, there's a little button here. And that's how you engage the max. Um, and this will get dirty as well. Um, the, the only thing I've seen that will clean this is those canned air blasters for like keyboards or computers. But you really want to be careful when you're spraying that because you do have electronics there. And then on the end piece here where the max button is, um, you have two filters. You got this main filter, and a lot of this is just for uh, noise or uh, to filter the air that comes out. And these, when I when I clean these, they usually get real soapy and whatnot. But uh, I think what it is is Dyson kind of put like an oil on a motorcycle or a car when they have when they have air filters like performance air filters. You actually oil them because it traps the particle and the dirt into the filter. So this is the round filter. It's real simple, and then you've got this other filter. That goes around the base and these had you, you want to install these back in there because um if you don't you're okay to use it but it will be extremely loud and that's that's pretty much it on this and then we'll just reassemble it here it's uh real easy to reassemble and when you put this this filter back in make sure where it connects is down by the where the trigger would go and there's little grooves in the plastic to hold hold the filter in. See these little plastic tabs? There's plastic tabs here to separate the filter. And these two tabs here will hold that pre that that the bigger filter there. So then you just reassemble it. And on this here, when you're reassembling, make sure that this port plugs in down here. And just push that in. Same thing with this. You've got your larger port. And actually, see this groove here? How this has a larger plastic groove? Um, on the inside of this piece here, you can tell... On this side this is where it's larger so you know that you're gonna put it in here just like that and line it up and then tighten these e-torx heads these are also I'll remind you again it's a t8 and a lot of times on a car when you're when you're putting these on 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 a motorcycle and you're smushing gaskets there's a certain order and you kind of or when you're putting a tire on a car you want to use a star crisscross pattern and just go to each side like a star. Oops. Haven't exactly had my coffee this morning. You know, I did drink a little bit of coffee, but I usually drink two, three cups of coffee to get me going. And remember, when you're pushing this, when you're pushing this purple piece down on this other piece, this other piece is rubber, so don't over tighten it. And because if you over tighten it, you'll smush the rubber seal. Should have got a better screwdriver. This is more of a household tool set. It's really simple to do, especially if uh, you're not real mechanically inclined. Uh, that's why I made this video is any, anybody can do this. Um, if you take your time, a lot of people just give up on stuff and you don't want to give up on it, especially when you have a $500 vacuum cleaner instead of taking it into the shop and getting charged 60 bucks an hour from whoever's repairing your Dyson They're probably just doing what I'm doing and they're gonna clean it And just make sure all these are tight Okay, and then remember to put your your uh, your screen filter on and there's the tab so you're gonna want to line the tab back up To there and this is just going to snap in just like that 
and we're going to reassemble the the head to the motor and remember the, the, these are like you, you have to press them in like a Jesus clip so what you want to do is you actually see these tabs here these cutouts on both these sides is I would tilt it up that way you have the head of the unit in it in the in the assembly and flip it back over and then you'll push these clips back and it will snap back in and uh, yeah we had a little malfunction there so you're gonna put the top of the head in and then squeeze the clips back together this might take a little time and there you go that's back together and then your cup if you own a Dyson you always know that the cup has to be down and always just tilt the cup tilt the cup forward line it up click it in put your cup back on and your pre-filter and then your battery there's really no need to remove the battery unless you're having battery problems on these I just removed the battery just to show you how simple it is actually more to this than I thought um, not a big fan of the all the plastic on stuff they, I, I swear these companies make these things out of plastic so you have to replace stuff when you break it I've actually had one of these where this whole shaft had broken um, like I said this one's been taped up and repaired you know here because it breaks but th these are really good vacuums um, especially for the power oops we'll have to remove it you have to remove the cup to get this last screw in And there you have it, how to uh, reassemble and uh, clean your Dyson. And yeah, so it's pretty simple stuff. And thanks for watching. Uh, more videos to come and check my other videos out. And any support from the links below would really help me out down the long road so I can keep making videos. But yeah, thanks a lot.